Welcome to our first ever Living Room Roundtable. I'm Edith, television major in the cinema TV department. And I'm Svetlana, a film major at LACC. We are happy to have our guests from Pipelines joining us. Shari and Crystal, thanks so much for coming. Uh, tell us about Pipelines and uh, your role in the organization. Sure, so I am actually the program director for Pipelines. Uh, Pipelines is a diversity and inclusion platform that aims to close or bridge the access and opportunity gap for underrepresented talents as people of color, women, LGBT, veterans, disabled, um, because it's super white male. And we want to change that because um, we really want the work in creative and tech to actually reflect society. And there's many different voices and several different unheard voices. And so we're aiming to do that through a mobile discovery app which students and talent will be able to download and upload their work um, so companies can actually staff their opportunities right through the app. So it kind of answers that question of where do we find this diverse talent? Well, you can find it through the app. Or students who may have a hard time finding opportunities that suit their needs, they can find it right through the app. So we're just making it easier, access easily accessible for them to take advantage of these opportunities. Hi guys, I'm the program assistant and my name is Crystal. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Um, and yeah, she basically summed it up, so. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your parent affiliation with, um, I believe it was Pretty Bird? Pretty Bird. Yeah, how did so, it get started? Uh, so our founding company is called Pretty Bird. We're a video production company in Culver City. And our bread and butter is basically commercials and music videos, but now we're doing a lot of uh, VR work, digital, f feature mm -hmm. film, and things of that nature. So our idea is to be a think tank. And because we are minority owned, we are owned by both Paul Hunter, who is one of the top prominent African-American directors, and Kirsten M. Hoff, who is a woman and one of the top executive producers in the industry. And what they found, a, pro a common problem that they found is being invited to a lot of diversity uh, panels and workshops and you know the one show in New York, uh, you have a lot of people who just kind of come together and say we have a huge diversity and inclusion problem what are we going to do about it this is terrible we need more women we need more people of color we're underrepresented and then they talk about the issue but then they all go home and nothing ever really happens or the, the needles moving very slowly so they came together and said you know we have the resources um, they kind of want to be the change we want to see type deal so they decided to create pipelines because we figure um, that which is uh, semi-purpose of this roundtable is that a lot of students and talent are having a very hard time finding these opportunities, you know, or feeling like one in a million when you go to Sony careers and you apply <laughs> and you apply to a job. I mean, they kind of feel like I'm like one in 700 million people that are probably applying for the same job. So how do we create a platform where people feel like I actually have a real shot? or actually have a real chance at, at meeting a mentor or a job shadowing or getting the experience that I need. And that, that wall, that brick wall kind of comes down. So we figure it's di a digital age. Everyone has a smartphone. So if they download a free app, they can say, hey, my name is Crystal. I'm an aspiring producer. Check out my work. I love to job shadow an executive producer at a production company. My dream job is to produce and direct. And here's some of my work. Here's my resume. Check me out. And so that feeds into a database where they're able to search for creative opportunities in their area that's uh, specific to their criteria mm -hmm. and their filters. And companies are doing the same exact thing on the other side. So, hey, we're Pretty Bird. We're located in Culver City. This is some of the work that we've done. Here's our website. Um, we're looking for three summer interns, and we'd love to take on an apprentice for two years. And this is what the requirements are. And these are the job opportunities. This is the pay. And then they are able to also feed into that same database and search for you, the talent. Mm -hmm. And then there's a mutual match, meaning if you can flag the opportunity that you like, then you can set up messaging and an interview right through the app. Mm -hmm. So it takes that pressure out mm -hmm. of having to apply online and never hearing a response, or it takes that pressure of right. how do I find a mentor? I don't even know anyone in the industry because it's about who you know, right? Um, so that's our main goal. We really want to make these opportunities tangible and real and not just say that we're doing something for diversity or say that we know what the issue is and actually speak to you guys and figure out what the, where the real problem is really happening. So that's why we're here. Yep. Well, that's actually exactly why I invited you. As a teacher who is teaching film and TV production, mm -hmm. one of the biggest struggles I have is helping my students get their foot from the educational door into the industry. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear from uh, my students, from you, and just kind of what are you looking for from them, from us, in a qualified uh, candidate who has a uh, little bit of experience, a little bit of knowledge, uh, what's the best way for them to present themselves uh, through pipelines or really to any organization? Well, in a general sense, I think uh, what we found, and please correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. 
But what we found uh, through our roundtables and just in general, I've worked in program management for some years now, and what I found it are a lot of people don't know that personality, passion, and drive right. goes a long way. Mm -hmm. The only reason I have the past three jobs, which have all been great jobs, is not because of my experience. Because when I first got hired into nonprofit and let alone diversity and inclusion, I worked for a bank. <laughs> I had yeah. a bank and like something else on my resume, but I had a great interview <clears> and <throat> I knew that's where I belonged. I was hungry and I, I knew this is a cause that's personal and, pa and I'm passionate about. And they saw that and they hired me because entertainment, you know, experience is important. I'm not saying it's not, right. but people want to know if they want to look at you every day. <laughs> if they yeah. like your personality, if you get along, if you're a right. team player, if you're able to do the job. And I think, uh, People, it's a, it sounds very simple, but people forget that your personality is just as important as your experience, and your drive and your passion is just as important. So, and also being you know, the education, like right. you know, a lot of people we talk to don't even aren't even fully aware of the extent of the the issue in the industry. Right. Like being a woman, number one, like mm -hmm. it, it's it's the problems are still there. You know, it's a ma entertainment is a white male dominated industry. It's okay. just the facts. You know, so it's just being a woman you know, the issues that they face on a day-to-day -day basis, looking for those opportunities, <coughs> and then being a woman of color is a whole different story. So, you know, or being LGBT, there aren't a lot of, you know, we, we, talk, we spoke to a right. group that had a lot of members from that community, and they were just saying, like, we're just even scared to even bring that up because right. it's just like how, are we gonna be perceived differently? Is our work not gonna be appreciated? Are we gonna lose sense of self? So you have all these identity issues, but staying true to yourself and just knowing like what you want and just remembering that like who you are is, is enough. Mm -hmm. We just have to be authentic and that is just something that simple and like learning the basics. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, do you have a... I mean, I would just say being open-minded and always being willing to learn no matter where you are in your career, no matter how old you are, you know, always being willing to learn because the majority of my mentors have taught me more than I've ever learned in schooling or at in a work setting um, and being on set actually using the equipment and using all the tools and programs and softwares I think that for me is most important just being open-minded and you know just being willing to learn you know just being putting yourself out there so I have it? a question um, so let's say you know if you guys ever did interviews what are like the don'ts of not doing when when we get to meet you, <laughs> funny. Yeah. Just spoke about that. It's so right funny. Because <laughs> um, we actually did a, an interview workshop based on yeah. that. Because um, another thing that that I, I saw amongst our de when I say our demographic, I just mean aspiring creatives in general, not just like students, but are the interviewing skills, you know? And um, you'll be surprised what you don't you don't know what you don't know. Right. So I mean, I could, the list goes on. But if I had to like have a top three. Um, I would say number one, do your research. Yes, I've learned <laughs> like, that lesson. Know who you're interviewing <laughs> with and know why you want the job. I mean, it seems so simple, but a lot of people just see dots like, oh, it pays that much. I want to do that. Like, that's not enough. You need to know why you want to be there. Right. Um, so why do you want to work for it? And, and be able to articulate that. Um, secondly, I cannot stress this enough to be yourself and don't lie. Like, don't right. go into thinking that you know what they want to hear. Like, oh, they probably want to know that I have, that they don't, you never know what the employer is looking for. Right. They could be looking for someone who has no experience because they need those fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. go into the interview and they're like, oh, I'm just going to tweak this and like BS this a little bit. You right. Know, just make, make my, but no, sometimes a lot of people are just like, you know what, I want to hire some fresh, get some fresh talent in here because maybe they have a fresh perspective. You just never know what they're looking for, so it's always best to just be yourself. And then... Um, I would say leave the fluff at the door. Yes. Be mm -hmm. real, authentic, mm -hmm. you know, um, and just be excited. Smile. Mm -hmm. A smile can go a such way, a long yeah. way. You know, they want to know if you, they can oh, look at you. Oh, please ask questions. Oh, yes. Ask questions. Don't ever say you don't have any questions. I cannot. <laughs> that just looks like, I mean, how do you, it's kind of like dating, And that's right? hard. Like, if you go on a yeah. first date and you, you don't want to know anything right. about the person you're getting to know, it's kind of like, okay, that's kind of weird. <laughs> Why like, are we here? I'm on this date, but I don't want to know anything about you. So if you're, because ultimately when you're interviewing, you're entering into a potential relationship. So right. if you don't have questions, that looks really sus and think and think about <laughs> questions because it is true I mean for for a few years for me that was always my most difficult thing they would always oh do you have any questions and my other one was what are the um, what challenges have you faced in your last you know job and um, I've always said you know oh learning new things has always been a challenge for me I'm not not that learning new things has been a challenge but like um, not having the tool, the right tools and resources that I needed to proceed, um, I kind of went off. Yeah. But you know what I mean. No, I get yeah. it. And if you, sorry, if you have lack of experience or very little experience, because right. I know a lot of people are afraid of that. That's like a big 
mm. thing. Like I don't have right. a lot of experience, so how do I make myself you know, pull from anything, volunteer activities that you've done, projects that you worked on in school. Like, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's not just work experience. Anything you've ever learned, any skill you've ever garnered from any projects you've done in church, and school, community activities, use that. Like it's not, they're not just asking what work experience that you have that you got paid for. You or know, even just, being self-taught. Yeah. Pull from anything. You're all about selling yourself. Any great mm -hmm. skills that you have. And I recommend just going home and like literally writing a list of everything that you have to offer. Like, I'm good at this. I can do this, 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 and this. And then look at it and post it somewhere so you know when you go into the interviews, you already got it in the bag. Like, you know what you have to offer and what you can, like, sell yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Sorry, that was like a lot. <laughs> I would say have good hygiene. Ooh. Real. <laughs> it's real. You don't know how small of a space you're going to be in. Okay? Just <laughs> Great. Uh, do you guys have any questions for our Sherry and uh, Crystal? Uh, I had a question about you saying um, that we need to be ourselves, you know, sell our personality, team player and all that. How do we project that onto our resume for the app since it's not a one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. uh, you know, situation? Because I've, I've always been told by my professor as well, like, you know, your personality is going to go a long way. Mm -hmm be you and all that but on a resume you know it's just words in a blank page so it's how can you know how can i tweak it or you know make it look more interesting mm -hmm. as far as uh projecting my personality onto my resume so i'll give you an answer for the app and then i'll give you an answer for outside of the app like if you're just applying so on the app we do we will have like a bio section and that's a that's a chance for you to shine Okay, so yeah, because the resume is very like straightforward, right? right? So that's when you make your bio interesting. It's just like, I mean, we can't think of a better slogan right now, but the, the app slogan is Tinder meets LinkedIn, right? Because <laughs> Tinder, not the logistics of Tinder, but you know, like the, the framework of Tinder, the swiping, right, right. it's the same. So when you're on a dating app, right, you want, you want to have a bio that like speaks to your like personality. So we'll have that same section where you're able to say, hey, this, these are my interests, this is what I like. Because we want to see past more than just like your work experience right. and your resume, right? Then outside of that, I'm an advocate for cover letters. And I know they're a pain Pain and can I curse? I'm sorry. <laughs> like, like pain, they're pain, pain and ass. I don't like to do cover letters, <laughs> but they're essential because I know they're a headache. But what the co the cover letter does is gives you that chance to show your personality and right. explain. A lot of people think cover letters are just uh, repetitive of your resume, but it's not. A cover letter should be have a chance for you to express your interests and the projects you worked on, so you can let your personality shine through words. And then your resume just complements that. But a lot of people, what they do, the mistake they make is just summarize the resume in paragraph form, and that is not a cover right. letter. Okay, so. So I, if you don't have one, I would strongly recommend doing just a brief cover letter to go with your resume and it's like a package. So that way they see your experience and they kind of hear like your voice or your tone or how you speak and kind of learn more about your personality through that way. So that's... And you have a chance to put a photo up so that's another cool way, yeah. you know? Yeah. Perfect. We want this to be really um, relative and, and not to sound cheesy, but we want it to be re re right. relative and cool and authentic and fun so we don't, we want you to put within appropriation of course right. a picture that you love like that expresses who you are mm -hmm. as a person because I mean the great thing about entertainment is it's never boring and personalities are a very important yeah. aspect of this industry so we want that to shine through your profile like through your your bio section and through the work that you've done and through your picture like things of that nature so to answer your question yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, let's say you're a writer director and uh, you're African in the mail, and uh, you're top of your class <clears throat> in school, and you have the the bomb mm -hmm. script. That's top script, and you want to you want to get to the right producer, the right executive producer. You had a budget, you had a package. How do you get to talk to, and get to that interview to get to that presentation? to making them believe that this is the script that they should be producing through your company. Mm -hmm. Well, this, I'm, I'm gonna keep it all the way real with you, okay? Mm -hmm. The industry, you have, like proactivity is so right. important. And when I say that, it's, it's very circumstantial. Like I, I don't have a formula, to be honest. There's no set formula, like this is what you need to do and it guarantees that it'll get in the right hands. Because right. I mean, even like our PAs at Pretty Bird, like a lot of them are aspiring directors and they, I'm sure you should have the same questions, but my, and you may feel, have something to add mm -hmm. to this, but my situation, if I was, a, I'm not a director, but if I was a director, I would be g finding out where these production companies, what events they're hosting. They have a lot of right. free, um, 
like free, what do you call them, like trade associations like Promax and they have a lot of street lights or ghetto film school who host events and bring speakers because it's all who you know. Like right. you, you want to get in front of somebody and meet them, get their business card and possibly have lunch. Like ideally. <clears throat> but in order to meet these people, you have to get out of the house. You have to know where to go. Right. Like there's, LA is like the, the, you have, yeah. has so many events going on like da like daily. You know, mixers. Like where are the mixers at? Where are the directors hanging out? Where are, what production what production events are happening? Women in film does a lot of things. Ghetto film school street lights. Like look these organizations up and then find out where they are and see and get in the room. Like right. you have to be in the room mm -hmm. first before that even happens. And I think a lot of and not saying you specifically, but a lot it becomes an issue of proactivity versus reactivity. Do I wait and figure out what's going on or do I get out there? and find out what's going mm -hmm. on, you know? So that's that's like the difference. So as long as you're in the room and in the vicinity, then that's half the battle showing up. Okay. So I, and I feel like it's kind of like scholarship money. Like it's out there, but people aren't proactive in going to get it. There's so much money out there for you. Right. You know, so that's why I say just be proactive, do your research. Okay, um, any final words of encouragement for aspiring filmmakers? So much. <laughs> I know. Um, I would say, you know, always listen to yourself, listen to your gut, you know, sometimes it's a little difficult when you have a hundred different people telling you to do a hundred different things, but I think if you follow your intuition and you believe in your craft so much, anything that you want to do will, you know, happen and you will work in the field that you want to work in, um, because the industry is, uh, it's like a spider web. You can go so many different ways about it. No one has a set path you can have a master's doctorate degree and whatever you want but the arts industry is so diverse and that's the beautiful thing about it is that uh, you can put up a YouTube video and somebody at Sony can see it and then boom there's your big break so you just have to keep going you know just don't stop so that's my advice I'm just gonna say don't be afraid to be unconventional okay mm -hmm. I live and breathe an unconventional lifestyle. Like, I love taking risks. When I see the struggle, I run towards it and through it, not away from it. And I feel like that's where you learn what you're capable of. That's where you learn new things and new capabilities about yourself and meet new people. Like, don't, when something sounds weird, then it's great. It's perfect for entertainment. Or for right. strange or untraditional, it's perfect. Yeah. You know, so don't try and fit into what you think this box is. There is no box in entertainment, no. unfortunately. Like, it's so, especially with the, the day and age we're in now, there's, I mean, like she said, there's Everything. so many opportunities. So many. And we need the weird voices. We need the strange, unconventional voices. So don't be afraid to be mm -hmm. unconventional, is what I would say. I actually wanted to see if anybody in the back row had a question. You've been listening so intently this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hi, my name is Thomas. I wanted to ask if you're interested in working with uh, producers on joint productions and stuff like that. Uh, Pretty Bird or Pipeline? Or both? Uh, yeah, either one. Um, yes and yes. Uh, the beautiful thing I love about Pretty Bird, and I, I, I am biased, okay? I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such an incredible company to work for because they're not afraid to... Um, like, boundaries. Yeah, to push boundaries and take risk on talent. A lot of companies right. are like, well, yeah, they're up and coming new, they have a lot of experience, but there's so many talented uh, creatives coming through the ranks, and I love the fact that they'll take mm -hmm. a meeting with the up and coming director, or they'll give advice, or they'll host events, or they create you know, organizations like Pipelines, right. or they love collaborating with new and other companies and producers, and like the Daniels, who, who did uh, Lil John Turnup and Swiss Army Man, right? Mm -hmm. They found a dog boarding, a, a $40 dog boarding video on YouTube, look it up, and, that, and they signed them based off of that right. video. <laughs> on YouTube, a, YouTube, a bunch of people skateboarding on dogs. <laughs> and it's great. Not and literally. <laughs> Not, don't do know, that at all. But <laughs> dog boarding, and they said, these, this, these guys have talent, and they signed them. And now, they're and now they can't even do all the work that they're requested for. But it's just take, taking that risk. So yes, I'm Pretty Bird. Pipelines, yes, we all, I feel like We Are Platform is going to thrive on the people on the app and the people who volunteer for us and speak to the students and collaborate with us and give us fresh ideas. Like that is how we're going to survive with the community helping us. So yeah, we're always willing to collaborate on other projects and have people speak or work with us or, you know, yeah. we're getting into podcasts. We're going to do all sorts of exciting stuff. So yes, yes, and yes. Sounds and great. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And I have uh, one more question. Um, you mentioned mentors and having people in the industry being willing to have people shadow them. Mm -hmm. um, how common do you find that to be, people willing to give back and help someone get a mm. foot in the door? I'm going to be honest, it's not common, and that's the issue. That mm -hmm. is a huge issue. And 
rarely, Crystal and I have both benefited from having great mentors in the yeah. industry, but this it's a very rare case and it's a huge problem, which is another reason why we're, we're offering, that's one of the serv right. services that we want to encourage other companies to do is to take on mentors, because I feel like, my personal opinion, I feel like the reason why we have an issue is because there are not enough mentors taking people under their wings. The only reason I got the last three jobs is because of my mentor, mm. right. for example. She, and I didn't even interview her, she just recommended me and introduced me to people. And it's so important, but we don't have enough people w saying yes and willing to do that. So as we're meeting with these companies, right. I always make sure I bring that up. Like how many, do you have a mentorship program in place? If not, are you willing to create one? Let us help you do it, you know? So it's just like, I, I think it starts with increasing awareness and just basically telling them like, hey, this is what we're gonna right. do, this is where you need to be, the commitment is not that much. I think there's a common misconception about mentorship, it's gonna suck all their time, you know, entertainment is really like self-centered. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so people are like, I don't really wanna do this, it's gonna take too much of my commitment, but it's really not. It doesn't take a lot of commitment, and it's a huge issue that we're working to change, that's extremely important, not only to us personally, right. but as a platform, is to get more companies to commit to mentoring th these, these talent and these creatives. I just had to say one tip I've learned uh, from when I first met my mentors. Uh, they were extremely busy, of course, but I was very persistent, and I sent them emails like, hey, I have a question. Are you free? Are you busy? Can you hop on a call? And you know, I went to them as like a, at an angle that I wanted to learn. And they were always willing to, you know, give me advice, if you will. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that's that that's a good tip. Yeah, yeah, because and that's also why we're working to bring, <laughs> which we'll talk about later in the segment, working yeah. to bring the industry to these classrooms and to the campuses and get them out of their desks and out of right. their work, so they can meet these creatives. Because like I said, like I told you before, it's all about being in the same room, right? Mm -hmm. So like the last round right. tip, we said they, they were like, it would be so dope if we had like a panel of directors just come. It's just different when you're hearing their stories and shaking their hands and getting the business cards and asking, hey, it's okay if I shoot you an email. And most of them are super willing to do that, but we have to get them here first, mm -hmm. right? So right. it's just, we're only one platform, but this is why this is so personal for us because we understand that there's such a, there's so much work to be done. But mentorship is so crucial, and like I said, this I know it's super hard to just call a production company. Like, hey, can you mentor me? Like, that's not what I'm saying, no, but I'm just, <laughs> it has to happen organically. But the step one is just being in the same room and going to these events and and following up, and following up, yeah, <laughs> totally. following up is so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any other questions? Yes. So um. After you know getting the job or getting the interview, do you guys have anything in place to help um, the people you guys encourage to apply um, to stick with the job or not? I won't even say stick with the job, but mm. far um, as far as how to deal with um, issues that may arise or not even issues, just how to deal in, in the entertainment um, industry because it's a little different in class than actually right. being out on the field. Mm -hmm. And I know like I come from a corporate background. Mm -hmm. Entertainment is totally different. Mm -hmm. In corporate America, if someone says something to you inappropriate, it's like, oh, go to HR. HR. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that um, in the entertainment industry? And do you guys have anything um, in place for um, the students or people that are coming through pipeline um, to help with that? Like, so they won't necessarily have to go to like a coworker or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can come back to you guys and get some knowledge on how to handle a situation. So we are actually planning on, on the nonprofit side, we will have a uh, guidance counselor. I'm trying to think of a sexier name because guidance counselor so, <laughs> sounds so studious. But we're, but we're gonna have counselors cause, uh, who are 100% dedicated to just the students. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not yeah. like Crystal and I doubling down on jobs and you get 50% of us here and 50% of us there. We really wanna hire a core group whose main concern are the students. Right. And everything you just described, is the that's the inclusion piece, right? right? We don't hear a lot about the inclusion and everything about diversity, but inclusion is just as important. Like mm -hmm. What happens once I get there? Because you know, institutional racism still exists. Females are leaving right. jobs because of se sexist, you know, like, remarks or whatever right. you have it or the inclusivity is not happening so I'm um, glad you brought that up so yes we will have counselors on board to to be able to address the students needs to check in on them making sure they're they're fitting in perfectly or mm -hmm. you know, serve as like semi soft mentors for them so we really want to have like a core group that's dedicated to just them so yes okay thank you so much for joining us uh, we look forward to learning more uh, about your organization as it grows Thank and thanks for your time and your input. For more information about the Cinema and TV program at LACC, visit www.laccollege.edu.
Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>